title what what to do in a storming situation what to do in a storming situation and uh, because i believe as children of god there is a way we re we, we respond unto things hallelujah we don't respond like anybody we don't we don't we don't we don't face things like anybody we are children of god hallelujah there is a way we respond in front of things you know uh when I, as i'm talking i'm thinking of the children of israel when they were in front of the red sea behind them that pharaoh with his army was following them they were screaming crying out to moses saying that you brought us here to to kill us hallelujah but moses was not crying moses turned his eyes on to god moses spoke to god moses had a different response than the other people hallelujah i want to tell you that you can respond differently according to the word of god and the word of god has as 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 as, as uh, the word of god suggests us many ways i mean specific specific ways that we ought to react facing our situation facing our challenges seeing the life of jesus jesus he lives his life and he said that i am the way it means the way i live you can live the way i live you have to follow my steps jesus there was a time jesus faced trials he faced tribulation he faced a, a, a storming situation but jesus had a different response hallelujah we say jesus with his disciples you know when you read the bible especially the gospels you see jesus and you see the disciples and you see also those who were coming to jesus seeking for help hallelujah now we have what we have to learn from those who came to jesus to seek for help we have what to learn from the disciples we also have what to learn from jesus but in this three categories of people the one that we seek to follow the one that we have to follow and leave his path and his ways is jesus hallelujah none of the disciples says i am the way the life and the truth only jesus said so hallelujah that's why we follow jesus steps hallelujah we don't only react the way peter react we don't only if we have to react the way Peter reacts I'm telling you at some point you will take a knife and you will chop someone is hallelujah so Peter is not really the model I'm not saying that we should not do what Peter but I'm saying that Jesus is the perfect model that we follow we are Christ like hallelujah Christian mean Christ like we 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 aim to look like Christ Paul said that Christ be formed in you Christ has to be formed in us not Paul not Peter Or even say, be my imitator as I am of Christ. So we imitate Christ. We imitate the life of Christ. How did Christ reacted facing situations and challenges, brothers and sisters? I'm not here to lie to you that there will not be a, a storming situation. There will not be unpredictable situation. Hallelujah! There will be things that will happen to you that you never predicted. Things will happen, but you know what matter is not. Uh, what would happen but your response regarding what is happening you might not control what will happen to you or you might not control what has happened to you but you can control your response you can control your reaction toward what is happening to you and that's what I'm about. I will share with you only two things that I discovered that I found uh, for some of us to remind I would like just to exhort you about two things that you can do facing your situation hallelujah we're going to read in the book of Matthew 8 Matthew 8 Matthew chapter 8 from verse 23 to verse 27 Matthew chapter 8 from verse 23 to verse 27 if you don't mind please write down the text Matthew 8 23 to 27 so that those who tune in after they can see the main text that we're using today hallelujah the bible says now when he got into a boat his disciples followed him and suddenly a great tempest arose in the sea suddenly a great tempest arose in the sea a tempest is a is a violent wind hallelujah is a violent storm suddenly a great tempest arose in the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves the boat was covered with the waves but he was asleep wow 
He was asleep. Jesus was asleep. The Bible says that a sudden tempest, a strong wind, hallelujah, a deadly wind arose so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Jesus was asleep. Brothers and sisters, let's look at the life of Jesus. It is blowing strong outside. The boat in which Jesus was sleeping was shaking, full of waves, covered with waves. But Jesus was sleeping. I'll open a bracket and tell somebody, let no one disturb your sleep. Now I'll say it again. Let no one, no man, no devil, no demons, no situation, no dream disturb your sleep. Hallelujah. When you sleep, you must sleep. Jesus slept when it was blowing left and right. Beloved, there are people that the devil really plays with. The devil cannot play with you, brothers and sisters. If you are a child of God, the devil cannot be disturbing your sleep. The devil can only the time that you find to sleep and rest, that when the devil comes and brings bad dreams, hallelujah, that when it comes, he brings attack and you cannot sleep. You find yourself praying all night a prayer that you never played. Hallelujah. I'm not against praying all night. You have to pray all night if you program to pray all night. The devil is not the one to detect your moment of prayer. The devil is not the one to wake you up and pray. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost must lead you to pray. Angels must lead you to pray, but not the devil. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Hallelujah. We are sons of God because we are led by the Spirit. If you are led by the devil, you are not a son of God. The devil is making you doing things. The devil is making you praying. Beloved, if you are sleeping and you receive an attack, wake up. If it happens that you wake up, go back to sleep. Sleep. Jesus is teaching us something here. When I sleep, I sleep. I don't care about the stone. The devil cannot wake me up. Because that wind, that wind had demons behind. Later on, you see, we'll read the text. Jesus rebuked the wind. Hallelujah. So a demon is not supposed to disturb your sleep. When you sleep, sleep. I heard a testimony that my pastor always shared uh, of uh, uh, one of the God general, uh, Smith Wigglesworth. He was sleeping in the, mid, in the middle of the night. He heard a sound uh, in, his, in his house. He heard a sound. He went down uh, um, out of his bed, bedroom to check what was happening. He came down, he found in a rocking chair, in the midst of, of, of the dark, of the dark of the night and of, of the house, he found a demon in the form of a human being on the rocking chair, moving and laughing at him. Guess what the man of God did? He didn't start shouting, screaming at the devil, studying a prayer night, a warfare prayer. What did he do? He said, if I knew it was you, I wouldn't bother myself to come and check. Wow. Wow. Brothers and sisters, you see a demonic manifestation in your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and you, 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 tell the, you tell that demon that if I knew it was you, I wouldn't pray. That's a life of a believer. That's a life of a Christian. The same spirit that worked in them is the same spirit that we carry. The same Holy, Holy Ghost that, 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 uh, that revived them. The same Holy Spirit that they work with is the, the same Holy Spirit that we have. I heard again another testimony of Bishop Oerepo. He went somewhere to preach. They got in, they got in the hotel. They, they, they received, they heard a, there was a strong wind blowing in the, in the windows and the curtains were shaking. Hallelujah. There was a demonic attack. A demon came in the form of a bird, a, a, a very huge bird that was uh, um, shaking the, the, the curtain. And he was not alone. He was with his team. Hallelujah. Then he stood. Everyone was shaking. He stood. He rebuked that demon. And the winds went, 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 went calm. Then he told his, 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 uh, his followers, he told them, nobody is praying, we are all sleeping. I don't want to hear nobody pray. Hallelujah. That's the man. That's the life of a Christian. 
When I have to sleep, I sleep. I don't let myself being disturbed by anybody. Jesus was sleeping when the, the storm was blowing. My pastor always shares his testimony. I'm talking about Pastor Michel Bayangang. He shares a testimony with us. He was sleeping one day in the midst of the night. He heard, he heard somebody laughing, laughing in his room, in the corner of his room. Hallelujah. He, he, he could see a vision, seeing a demon in the corner laughing at him as he was sleeping. He opened his eyes. He told that demon, watch me. I'm sleeping. I'm not going to pray and you will do nothing to me. Guess what? He woke up in the morning and till today he's still alive. Hallelujah. So Jesus, when it was blowing around, Jesus was sleeping. I repeat myself, don't let any devil disturb your night, brothers and sisters. Don't let any demon disturb your peace. Rest when you have to rest. Hallelujah. Oh, that was just a, a, a big bracket that I hope and that I'm closing quickly. We are continuing reading. We're reading Matthew 8 from verse 23. I was in verse uh, 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 24 already. Um, the Bible says, but he was asleep. Jesus 25. The Bible says, then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful? All you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that's, that's the story that we, we, we read. Such an amazing story. Jesus with his disciples. Hallelujah. As they were crossing on the other side, uh, a wind uh, 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 the, the Bible talks about the, the tempest arose, the strong wind arose. And uh, we see the disciples, the way they were reacting. The, the Bible says that the winds were so strong that, that, um, that the boat was covered with waves. The boat started sinking. It was covered with waves. It means the situation was so overwhelming. The situation was, was, was so overwhelming. The situation was real. They, danger, they were in danger. Hallelujah. The, the Luke described the same story. He said they were in jeopardy. They were in danger. They were in trouble. And the trouble was real. I want to tell somebody. If the situation, the, if the storm look real, hallelujah, remember that your victory is so real. I repeat myself. If the storm look real, Remember that the victory, your victory, is so real. If the situation seems overwhelming, remember that you overcame already. Hallelujah. Remember that you overcame already. So Jesus slept. Then he woke up. He rebuked his disciples and he rebuked the wind. Hallelujah. So I, as I say, I just want to share with you two things. Two things that you have to do uh, in the midst of a storming situation. The first thing, the first thing quickly, the first thing that you have to do, do not panic. The first thing you have to do in a storming situation, in an overwhelming situation, in an unpredictable situation, do not panic. Do not panic. Hallelujah. Do not panic, brothers and sisters. Panic cause many people to be in trouble that's one of the things the holy spirit taught me there was a day i was i was driving i was i was nearly gonna be involved in a in a, in a very dangerous car accident but listen don't i i till today i don't know i how i survived how i was not a a, a, a victim how i went out of it Hallelujah. But there's one thing I remember. As I was holding the wheel, I didn't panic. And when I went, when I, I, I escaped the danger, the accident, the car that was coming before me, the Holy Spirit began to minister so many things to me. And one of the things the Holy Spirit told me, you see, you didn't panic. You didn't panic. Hallelujah. That's the attitude that God is expecting from us. 
You know, when, when, when things happen, the devil wants you to panic. That's why David will say, even though I walk in the valley of shadow of day, I will fear no evil. How fear no evil. So Jesus was not expecting the disciple to panic because when he woke up, when he woke up, in verse 26, he said, why are you fearful? In other words, why are you panicking? Hallelujah. It means, no matter how overwhelming, how, uh, 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 how, how, how the situation or the, the challenge looks like, God is not expecting you to panic. He's not expecting you to be afraid. Do not panic. Hallelujah. Panic is a, is a sudden uncontrollable fear. It's a sudden uncontrollable fear and anxiety often causing unthinking behavior. A sudden uncontrollable fear and anxiety often causing unthinking behavior. Hallelujah. Do not panic. In other words, don't be anxious. Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for anything, for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Pastor, you're saying that it's possible to go through a challenge, an unpredictable situation. Nothing is working. Hallelujah. Seeing the boat sinking, being in the boat, and being anxious for nothing. Are you telling me that it's possible? Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Because the Bible said so. Jesus said, why are you fearful? Why are you panicking? It means Jesus was not expecting them to panic. I'm here to tell somebody, do not panic. No matter what happened to you, no matter the news that you receive, do not panic. Many people get themselves more in trouble because they panic. Hallelujah. This word comes to you. I don't know what you're facing, but I'm telling you, God knows what you're facing. And he placed in my heart to tell you, do not panic. Whatever report that you have received from the doctor, whatever report you have received from your boss, whatever report you have received from the news, whatever, whatever happening in your marriage, do not panic. Hallelujah. Why must you not panic? Because God is in charge. Because God is in control. Because you're not alone. God is with you. Hallelujah. Jesus was with them and arose a great tempest. Hallelujah. Oh, the storm is not always a sign that you're not in the will of God. I'll repeat myself. The presence of the storm is not always a sign that you're not in the will of God. Crossing on the other side was not the disciples' initiate, initiative, was not the disciples' plan. It was Jesus' intention. It was Jesus' will for them to cross on the other side. In fact, it's the one who initiated it. He said, let us cross on the other side. As they were crossing on the other side, the storm came. You are doing the will of God. You, you, you find yourself in the will of God, doing what God has, 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 has instructed you to do. In the midst of you doing the will of God, serving God in His purpose, in the midst of you doing the will of God, you find yourself in the midst of challenge. You find yourself in the midst of trouble. You ask yourself so many questions. God sent me to tell you, do not panic. He is with you. Do not panic. Why? Because God is with you. God is in charge. God is in control. You will not lose that job. You will not. Listen, even if it happened that you lose the job, God is still in charge. God can still provide. And God, if you lose that job, I promise you, you will lose it to get a better one. Because God is in charge. Hallelujah. Because God is in control. Do not panic. Your child will not die. Your child will not die. Your husband will not die. Your wife will not die. Your marriage will not die. Your ministry will not die. Do not panic. Let not any trouble shake you. Yes, it's possible. It's possible to not panic. That's why Jesus told them, he said, why are you fearful? Because you are not supposed to be afraid. Do not panic, brothers and sisters. Whatever happened to you, keep your calm. Keep your calm. Stay strong. Hallelujah. Stay strong. Remember that God is with me. I'm not dying. Remember that God is with me. 
God is with me. I'm making it. I'm an overcomer. I'm a, I'm a success. I'm winning. And this butter. I'm a winner. I'm not losing. I'm a winner. I'm stronger. I'm going higher. I'm crossing on the other side. Do not panic. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel in my heart that I'm talking to somebody. You are watching me. God tells you. God is speaking to you. Do not panic. Receive this word. Receive this word. Do not panic. If you have to write it down for you to not forget, write it down somewhere so that when you wake up, when you pass by, you see, do not panic because God is in charge. God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Cobra dia sande reba shakamasa. Koraba sande rebo shakarama. I strongly feel in my heart that God is speaking to somebody. Koraba shakere mo sabikana. Do not panic. Do not panic. Do not panic. The second thing. The second thing. The second thing. Speak to the situation. The first thing I said, do not panic. The second thing, speak to the situation. Hallelujah. Jesus woke up. The Bible says, He rebuked Mara Sonde Brada. Then he arose. Verse 26. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. He rebuked the winds and the sea. Oh, I like Jesus. I like the way he functioned. He rebuked the winds and the sea. Hallelujah. Two things, the winds and the sea. The winds was what was causing the sea to shake, to cause waves, so that the boat begins to sink. Hallelujah. So when Jesus came, he rebuked the wind, which was the cause of the waves. Hallelujah. He rebuked the wind, the source, the cause of the situation, and then he stopped the situation. Wow, that's how it functions. Hallelujah. Jesus is amazing. I like what Pastor Jean-Claude says. He says he's a, he's, a, he's a specialist. A specialist God. He's not a generalist. He, that he, he has a, a, a special way, a perfect way of dealing with things. When he comes, when he steps in, he, steps in, he, he deals with the cause and the situation. Speak to the situation. Hallelujah. Speak to Jesus arose, he rebuked the winds and the sea. Hallelujah. He rebuked the winds and the sea. Notice I said, speak to the situation. I didn't say speak to God about the situation. The Bible says in Matthew 17 verse 20, Matthew 17 verse 20, if you have faith, you will speak to this mountain. If you have faith, you will speak to this mountain. Move from here today and it will. If you have faith, you will speak to this mountain. You will not speak to God about the mountain, but you will speak to the mountain. If you have faith, you will speak to the mountain. Faith commands that you speak to the situation and not to God about the situation. Hallelujah. Speak to the situation, brothers and sisters. Speak to the sickness. Hallelujah. Speak to that trouble. Speak to that situation. Speak to that challenge. Don't speak to God about it. Speak to the situation. The disciples came. They came to speak to Jesus about the situation. But when Jesus stood, he spoke to the situation. He never spoke to his father about the situation. (laughs) Hallelujah. Notice Jesus, whenever, whenever you face a challenge, he will speak to the situation. Hallelujah. You speak to the disease. You speak to the sickness. One of the rare, the, 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 the rare circumstances where Jesus spoke to God before the situation was in front of Lazarus' tomb. He even said, he stated it in his prayer. He said, Father, I'm not praying for me. I'm not praying for me. I'm praying for these people. Hallelujah. For them to know that you have sent me. Hallelujah. You know how I function. I'm not praying to you for me. I'm praying to you for them. I just want them to know what is happening between the two of us. And then he spoke, he called Lazarus. He spoke to the situation. Beloved, learn to speak to the situation. Listen, when you speak to God, as a child of God, it's for fellowship. It's for impartation. 
it's for divine wisdom it's for orientation it's for uh, uh what uh, uh yeah it, it's for fellowship it's for 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 intimacy it's for it's it's for for guidance hallelujah but when you speak to the situation you actually using the authority that you have as a believer hallelujah because every believer has an authority to to manifest to to use so you speak to god as his chair as his child you speak to god for fellowship for for intimacy for guidance for impartation but when you face the situation you don't speak to god hallelujah you deal with the situation i like what my pastor always say he say when when you are a son a, a soldier and you are deployed in, in the ground for for a work when you see a thief you have everything you have the weapon you have the power and the authority to use the weapon the power given and then you see a thief will you phone the headquarters and say general i've seen a thief must i arrest him no the general when you are deployed they give you instruction jesus said go preach the gospel heal the sick set free the captive Hallelujah. Deliver those who are oppressed. They give you already instruction. Now, when you face the situation, you don't call back to get again the instruction. No, you deal with the situation and the situation, and then you come to report. Hallelujah. So when we spend our moment with God, we report with Him our experience. We tell Him what we have done. But we don't come to God and speak to Him about the situation. Hallelujah. Whatever you are facing, brothers and sisters, you have the power. You've been given the authority to control everything. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the winds and they marveled. The last verse, verse 27, the Bible says, So they marvel and they say, Who can this be? Hallelujah. What man of men is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Hallelujah. They say, What kind of man is this? Well, it's the kind of man that you are. Mm -hmm. The kind of men that Jesus was is the kind of men that they were. Hallelujah. The same power Jesus functioned with, the same power God has given us. The same power he has given us. The authority to use power he has given us. In Genesis 1, 28, God say, have dominion. When he created men, he say, have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. Have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. I would like to tell somebody, in God, your dominion has been restored. You have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. Jesus rebuked the winds and the sea. You ask me, what's wrong with the winds? A wind is just a wind. What's wrong? With, why, did, why did Jesus rebuke the winds? Not every wind you see is wind. Hallelujah. There are winds that are actually uh, um, protecting demons behind. There are winds that are carried by, by demons. There are winds that are carried by demons. Hallelujah. But, oh, Maraka Masande Rebasha, Reka Mama Mama. Jesus said, the Bible says, you have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. Winds included. Winds moves on the earth. A wind lives and it moves on the earth. So you have dominion over the winds. You can calm the winds. You can stop the winds. So they were, they were marvel, saying to themselves, what kind of man is this? Even winds obeys him. Yes, Jesus was the kind of man that we are today in him. Hallelujah. The kind of man who can stand and stop the winds. The kind of man who can stand and say a word and things are changed. The kind of man who can stand and stop the situation. You have that power, brothers and sisters. You can stop whatever is happening to you. God has given you the power. He has given you the ability. Hallelujah. You can stop every. You can stop the cause of everything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus. Whatever, whatever, whatever trouble, whatever trouble, that you've been facing, in the name of Jesus, I stop every wind i stop every wind i stop every wind everything every demon that has been causing sickness in your body infirmity in your body at the sound of my voice i release your healing in the name of jesus i stop every wind that has been blowing in your family blowing in your finances blocking everything in the name of jesus i unlock i unlock i unlock in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for you have the power. You have the power. Oh, Father, I thank you. 
Thank you for this moment. Brothers and sisters, I promise you to not be long. I just wanted to share with you these two things. For those who are just joining now, I spoke about two things. The first thing, in the midst of a challenge, what you should do, do not panic. Do not panic. Hallelujah. Remember that God is with you. Remember that he said he will never leave you, never forsake you. Remember that the Holy Ghost lives in you. Remember that you are covered. You are heavenly backup. Hallelujah. Remember that you will not go down. Remember that you are not losing it. You are actually making it. Hallelujah. Remember, remember that the strength of God, the power of God get manifested in our weakness. Remember that in that moment, God is being revealed and you are working out. You are working your way out. You are working your way out in the name of Jesus. Do not panic. The second thing, speak to the situation. Don't speak to God about the situation. Learn to speak to the situation. Hallelujah. You, when you do that, you develop your authority as a believer. When you do that, you develop and you use your authority as, your, as a believer. For as a child of God, you have authority to speak to the situation, to speak to the wind. When you see a sick person, speak to that sickness. Command that speak, sickness to go. When you have pain, hold yourself, touch yourself, whatever you have pain. Command that pain to, to stop in the name of Jesus. Speak to the pain. Don't ask God to come and remove the pain. No, you are the one feeling the pain, not God. Command the pain to go because you've been given power to deal with situation. I repeat myself, when you deal with God as a child of God, it's, it's for fellowship, you know, it's, it's for impartation, it's for guidance, it's for intimacy. Hallelujah. And you don't disturb, you don't bother that moment with issues that you, could, you could, that you could deal with, that God has given you power, enough power to deal with. Deal with the situation. And when you speak to the situation, you're actually exercising your authority as a believer. I hope this message has blessed you. If you've been blessed by one or two things that I said, please let someone else be blessed. Share this word. You don't know what someone is going through. And simply by listening to this, hallelujah, his eyes will be open. You'll realize that he's been panicking for things that he could handle. Hallelujah. You'll realize that he has been given dominion over every living thing on this earth. He's the kind of man Hallelujah, that Jesus was on earth because he has the same life that Christ has. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are connected. I thank you for those who have been sharing this life. Father, I pray that your grace mara so nebra kinaha rakuma zivra kanama sende basha roko museke mandaba as I'm closing this prayer, I see a rain. I see a rain falling over you, falling over you. A rain of grace, a rain of good news, a rain, a rain, a rain. Masonde ba shaka masa, a rain of joy, of joy, of joy falling over you. Father, thank you, thank you for what you're doing, thank you for what you're doing, thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, we've prayed and we said, Amen, Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next time.